Welcome everyone to International Rivers 2021 Rivers Unitas Gala. I'm Isabella Winkler. I'm development director and a member of the management team. And I'm thrilled to be your MC for the evening for this critical mission to protect rivers and support the human rights of those who depend on them the most. Tonight, we will hear about International Rivers work to protect rivers. We'll learn why rivers are so critical for biodiversity, for the lives and livelihoods of people who live in river basins and for access to quality fresh water that we all need to survive. But we are also here tonight to celebrate you. Your presence here is what makes our work possible. Today is the premier launch of our fundraising gala and it is also World Human Rights Day. So we are delighted that you're here with us. We thank you for your past support we ask you to renew that support or become a first time donor. So please get comfortable, grab a drink and a favorite snack and sit back, and enjoy the show. Let's dive right in with a brief message from some of the indigenous people we work with in the Amazon. <laughs> Meu nome é Megaron de Carramai. Meu nome é Tamaluí. Meu nome é Macauana. Bemoro, né? Meu nome é Timeia Surini. É o Cacique do Camaiorá, né? Sou Caminquia Quincede. Pajé Sapaim Camaiorá. Eu sou o maior curandeiro. Eu sou da terra indígena Xingu. Sou da aldeia Coatinemo. Eu sou da etnia Caiapó. Eu Alapite. Meu bem Bocré. Cuicuro. Meu Inaco. Caiapó. Eu... Estou muito preocupado. Nós está preocupado. É o preocupante muito que nós, nós povo. Com a nossa terra, a nossa floresta, nosso rio Xingu. Porque a terra, o mato, é nosso alimento. Ó. Onde a gente procura nosso alimento para os nossos filhos, para os nossos netos. Porque isso é o nosso mercado, rio, né? Esse aqui é o peixe, igual do mercado. Para isso, nós precisamos a terra viva sempre da nossa região. O que mais nos preocupa atualmente hoje é a queimada da nossa floresta. Tem muito desmatamento e o pessoal jogando muito veneno na, na soja, lá na plantação, cai na água. E isso não estão comendo peixe envenenado, nós estamos com problema sério. Acabando com nossas terras, é, poluindo nossos rios, né? e onde a gente está pegando peixes né, que estão tá contaminados pelo agrotóxico. Então isso é muito preocupante. É difícil para nós hoje. O meu povo, a Sorini, um dos diretamente impactados por Belo Monte, né? essa usina que trouxe um monte de problema para o meu povo. Eu também não aceito o Belo Monte. Queremos que o homem branco respeita. Respeitar. Tenha mais respeito. Meu povo precisa de respeito. Respeita nossa terra, nossa floresta, nossa cultura, nossa língua e nós indígenas. O meu amigo não vai ficar com ele, mas vai um mal e meio bem má. Então a gente está pedindo, a gente está pedindo muito forte o um respeito. I'm always touched by that film. 
Our work on the intersection of environmental protection and human rights is what brought me to International Rivers, and it's one of the things that makes our organization unique. Another unique thing about our approach is that we work as a network. We have over 860 partners around the world, and that film that you just saw was made with some of our partners in Brazil. One of the things that we've been focusing on this year is the global economic recovery as a result of the pandemic. We're particularly concerned that large hydropower projects are being upheld as a solution to climate change and a source of renewable energy, especially when they are opposed by the people who live by the rivers where these projects are supposed to be built and are often very destructive to the environment. Next, I want to show you a short piece that illustrates why dams are one of the threats that are faced by rivers, especially in light of the global pandemic. Water is essential to life on Earth. Though 70% of the world's surface is covered in water, only 2.5% is fresh water, and less than half of that is available for our use. Yet global river systems and watersheds are in crisis. They have been dammed, diverted, polluted, and destroyed at frightening rates. The cost to people and Earth's living systems is catastrophic. An estimated 80 million people worldwide have been displaced by dams, and the destructive disturbances downstream of dams have impacted considerably more lives. 25% of the world's population already face severe water scarcity. By 2050, if we continue business as usual, water scarcity will affect half the planet's population. The climate crisis will only make matters worse. Still, destructive industries, such as large dam builders, are currently ramping up projects that will further destroy rivers and livelihoods, while falsely marketing them as clean energy solutions to the climate crisis. This needs to stop. As we rebuild economies and livelihoods following COVID-19, a truly green recovery must protect the Earth's life support systems, safeguarding water sources indispensable to biodiversity and public health. And it must confront the climate crisis in a socially just and equitable way. It's a tall order, but we can do it. We must do it. Time is running out. As we've heard, the time has really come to take a stand on protecting rivers and freshwater ecosystems. And I want to thank Todd Southgate, a fantastic environmental filmmaker who made the last couple of films that we've just seen. And now I want to introduce you to the executive director of International Rivers, Daryl Knutson. Hi, Daryl. Hi, Isabella. And thanks to all of you for being here tonight. I'm coming to you from Oakland, where we have International Rivers headquarter offices and where I've been stuck since I started as executive director about 18 months ago. We work on river basins around the world, and I haven't been able to travel to meet any of our staff yet or see any of these basins or meet any of our partners. One place I have been is the Marañón River, which is a river the International Rivers works on and that I had a chance to go visit before I ever came to this organization. In fact, I had a chance to paddle the Marañón for 14 days in my kayak. Now the Marañón is the headwaters of the Amazon, one of the mightiest rivers in the world, and it's incredibly important. And I saw how beautiful that area is. I saw how rich its ecosystems are. And I met people who live in remote villages, days, days walk from, a, from where a car can drive, whose lives and livelihoods would be threatened and destroyed if one of the nine dams on the Marañón were built. I started just after the pandemic hit us. And the pandemic, it's been hard for all of us, but it's been especially hard on our partners, on some of the indigenous communities who live on the rivers that we're working with partners around the world to protect. In fact, some governments have used the opportunity of the pandemic as a distraction to create chaos, to allow illegal logging to take place, to allow illegal mining to take place, and skip environmental review processes to build dams and other infrastructure projects on rivers. So we've had to work double time 
to try to direct the world's attention uh, to this fact, to try to make sure that economic recovery funds aren't used to build harmful infrastructure projects. But International Rivers has known all along that we have to work with people, that we need to, the only way to protect rivers is to uplift the rights of those who depend on them. And the only way to protect human rights is to make sure we all have a healthy environment to live in. Thanks, Daryl. Can you tell us a little more about how exactly International Rivers works with people to protect rivers? All right, absolutely. Well, we focus on three main areas. So the first area is building movements and defending human rights of river defenders. The second area is on permanent legal protections and effective river governance. And the third area is on holding developers and financiers accountable. You can make a difference to help protect rivers, to promote climate resilience, to reduce the impacts of climate change, to promote biodiversity, to promote human rights, to protect rivers. That is why we are here tonight. Your donation helps support our work, working together with communities across the global south, learning from indigenous worldviews about how to protect and restore rivers, the lifeline of fresh water for all of us. And here to learn a little bit more about what your dollars support when you give to International Rivers is a word from my colleagues and volunteers from around the world. Rivers are complex mutual connections between water, people and non-human beings. Large dams disconnect these vital relations. Dams do not care about the culturally and ecologically specific interactions through which life flourishes. From upstream, hydropower corporations disregard and erase people's ongoing dialogue with their environment. Sadika, my name is Pai Ditet. I am a campaigner for the Mekong and Salween in mainland Southeast Asia with international viewers. One of the key campaigns that I am part of is uh, the campaign to protect the free-flowing Salawin River that emerged from the Himalaya Garcia and flowing all the way to southern part of China and flowing to uh, ethnic state of Myanmar and sharing a small part of Thai border then emptying itself to the Andaman Sea which is part of Indian Ocean. This pristine river is one of the most uh, marginalized river in the world because of the location as well as political context. Uh, since early 2000, international rivers work together with uh, indigenous communities living along the Salawin River in three countries. We work with the Karen indigenous people, Kareni, Shan, Mon, supporting them to protect their livelihoods as well as their source of life, which is this river. The Salawin is unlike the Mekong. There is no dams over there yet. And we have learned so much from adverse impact of the dams on the Mekong to local communities and river ecosystem. So we don't want to see the same thing to happen right here on the Salawin. This campaign is a very um, interesting, exciting, complex campaign because it involves the transboundary river, the name of the river, the river Tista. It flows from the Indian state of Sikkim into the Indian state of West Bengal and from then on into Bangladesh where it meets the mighty Brahmaputra River and then into the Bay of Bengal. Um, we work in different areas of the river but this campaign that I'm going to be talking about is at the source of the river um, located in a place called Zongu which is a magical place um, from where the, the Lepcha tribe originates. And this campaign is with the people from Zongu and their fight against uh, the Tista Four Dam and the Panam project to protect the last free flowing stretch of the Tista River because we're seeing that we already have many of the, the dams already come up further upstream and downstream. Over the past uh, 70 years, the Salawin and Myanmar as a whole been under the military regime with little window for the, uh, for the civilian government. And since uh, earlier this year, when the coup happened in Myanmar, uh, things getting worse. And for the past uh, two decades, villagers and all part of the society in the Salawin try very hard to protect this pristine river from hydropower development. Because if a dam is built over there on the Salawin River, this means that 
not only the valley will be flooded, but also home of those marginalized people, those who demand for democracy, those who demand for public participation and accountability. International Rivers works in a way that very few organizations work. Um, we use in International Rivers our privilege as people with a lot of expertise and policy expertise and technical and law and campaigning with the communities. And we put our privilege at the service of communities to protect our rivers. And this is absolutely key in today's situation with a climate crisis, a biodiversity crisis, and a lot of the people that are defending rivers under fire. More and more people have faced violence, armed conflict, and repression from the regime. For the past month, during the military coup in Myanmar, there was a airstrike on Thai Myanmar border uh, for some months in the dry season. So thousands of people fled their home, fled their farm to be refugees on Thai soil, but immediately pushed back by the Thai authorities. So if a dam is built, which this will mean that one of the last safe places for indigenous people hiding themselves from armed conflict will be in undated. So this will be huge humanitarian crisis. The Himalayan belt or the, the Himalayan region as such is a very fragile ecosystem. The kind of um, damage that hydropower causes to these fragile ecosystems is, is something that governments aren't willing to actually accept. They want to keep building it and they want to keep sort of greenwashing the public into saying that hydropower is sustainable, hydropower is green, hydropower is, um, you know, a renewable source of energy. But what we're talking about is, is mega hydropower isn't the kind of impacts that it has are devastating, not just for the ecology, but also for the people that live by these dams. We're seeing similar mistakes being made in Uttarakhand, in another state in, in, in India, and we're seeing similar issues that will come up in Himachal and Jammu and Kashmir um, and in Nepal where they, they want to build uh, and rely heavily on hydropower. And for us to keep doing this is, is going to um, cause massive impacts on a very large population of the world. So rivers are absolutely key for our planet and our life. But that is not necessarily something that is clear and seen in a lot of uh, political decisions or energy policy. Rivers are important for biodiversity, for climate, for energy production, for food production, for human rights and for communities. And that, that is the work that International Rivers is doing. It's connecting and deeply understanding why is are the rivers uh, important and what are the solutions that we need globally to protect them effectively. So I am in a moment of my life that I'm really thinking what is the best role that I can contribute with in the world and rivers, I mean I love rivers, I've been working to protect rivers for a long time and International Rivers is one of the champions globally uh, doing this job in the in the way that it aligns with my values because it centers and works with communities uh, in a moment where with the climate crisis and the biodiversity crisis we need to protect rivers everywhere. Over the last couple of years, International Rivers has been working on a water governance program, um, and through that program, we've been running. Um, several trainings and capacity building for the communities along the Tista, whether up in Sikkim, West Bengal or in Bangladesh. Um, so when it comes to the Lepcha community, we saw a, an amazing opportunity to actually work with the women from uh, Sikkim and from Zongu in particular, the, the women leaders from the movement on the ground um, and, and, and the youth. Um, and we see that as a really important part of um, you know, working with movements and working with um, communities on the ground is to make sure that the voices that are least heard at decision-making tables are then taken to those tables and, and heard because there is a lot of wisdom in this experience. Uh, I've seen that even it's been so long, it's been almost 20 years, but people are still active. They are tirelessly work to get together, organize themselves, asking for submitting letters to the government, demanding for important documentations, 
are working with lawyers and journalists trying to voice their concern to the wider public because I think they are one part is that they see themselves as a global citizen as well that this river doesn't just belong to tiny group of indigenous people but this belongs to the entire world. I'm constantly reminded that the meaning and message of environmental and river system loss can't be detached and disembodied from the experiences of people who know, live and feel as part of rivers. So what a river means, the challenges it faces and the struggle to protect it is most acutely experienced at this level. This grounded connection creates the possibility for deep understanding and for care and compassion and is also key, I believe, to the possibility for change. One of the things that I'm proud the most about working in the Salawin movement is that to me this is one of the most democratic movements to protect rivers and natural resources because it includes all voices in the society, including teachers, students, farmers, elders, women groups on Thai Myanmar border on Korean side is declared by the local communities to be the Salawin Peace Park, which is one of the iconic campaign to, de to demand for peace, not war, because the area has been under the armed conflict for the past seven decades. We are the part of the democratic movement that defend for the rise of the civil society and the rise of citizens in the Salawin and in Myanmar. We demand not only for the better planning of the Salawin Basin, but also protecting this last place where people are still able to voice their concern to protect the river and protect their own rights. I've been very interested in native peoples and uh, indigenous people and their cosmovision and repeatedly over my lifetime I have heard from original peoples, native people, that human populations need to protect and take care of nature. With the, with the understanding that humans are also a part of nature. Protecting nature is protecting people also. That is the roots of the rights of nature movement. And rivers have become a central focus um, in the rights of nature. So the world is reaching a critical point of no return on climate change and rights of nature, rights of rivers. This approach offers a transformative change. First, it recognizes that nature is not mere human property, but that instead possesses basic rights. Second, rights of nature um, typically gives nature legal standing, which means um, that the river or nature has a chance to stand in court, to be heard in court and to be defended in a court of law. And third, the uh, rights of nature approach creates duties for humans to act as guardians or stewards of the natural world. The Rights of Nature, Rights of Rivers campaign is important because it sets a transformative model, a change of paradigm, and an examination of the ontological and epistemological assumptions we have of nature. The concept and practice of economic development needs to change. We all know that. And it is changing, giving an opportunity to life an opportunity to a healthy planet and away from the concept of nature as a merchandise to exploit. And so in that sense, it's important not only for indigenous peoples to continue to protect their areas, their forests, their biodiversity, their culture and so forth, but it's important for all of us. It's about life. We're talking about life. I think it is, it is time for us to recognize that, yeah, Flowing rivers mean so much for local people, but it also gives fresh water to the ocean and all the ocean are connected. How can we support all this kind of movement? I think can be one of the most important questions for these days.
इंटरनेशनल रिवर्स क्या इसलिए कि हम आप लोग आप लोग से प्रार्थना करता हूँ इसे ही हम लोग मदद करें मैं भगवान हम हम प्रार्थना करता हूँ कंचनजंगा हिमालय को सब प्रकट कर कर चाहता हूँ कि आप लोग अच्छे से रहे क्या लॉन्ग लीव रहे तो इन्हें कह कर मैं छोटी बातों की बंद करना चाहता हूँ प्लीज जॉइन मी एंड सपोर्ट इंटरनेशनल रिवर्स की वर्क फॉर द प्लान थैंक यू Thank you Maureen, Pai, Aisha, Astrid and Monty. The work you guys do inspires me every day and I just want to thank you for your tireless passion and commitment. And now to our partners at home, now is the time where we invite you to carefully consider your gift to International Rivers. We know you support various causes and we're asking you to count International Rivers among the top 5 organizations you support this year. The way International Rivers does environmental protection brings a critical perspective to the table even when we're working with much larger environmental organizations because it talks about indigenous world views. And we're beginning to see that concepts like the rights of nature which come from those views are what we need to embrace culturally, politically, socially if we're going to stand a chance of coming back from the brink of climate change. Our goal this year is $225,000, which helps us support movements, promote fair water governance, and hold financiers and developers accountable. Please join this movement and make a gift. Your contribution makes a world of difference. We're International Rivers and we want you to be part of International Rivers. Thanks everyone. And now I'd like to share with you a spoken word poem by Lepcha poet Denmit Lepcha, who's just gotten a book of her poetry published, with musical accompaniment by the only folk fusion Lepcha band in the world, Sofiu. Dam your dams, dear people. I'm sure you wouldn't like it if your arms were twisted, your legs cut off, your breath suffocating. and your pathway blocked and altered so does the star on the banks of which we picnic on new years where the bong thing washed away our ill omens where my dad spent his boyhood days angling all day are but memories only left to cherish because now Our tista no more sprints or leaps or girls but is forced to move slow in still in dark empty tunnels where once it flowed freely on its own will bringing in abundance of mirth and fertility But now its course is a matter of discourse because dams have eroded not just our lands but our culture our identity amid slogans shouting hashtag stop #nhpc hashtag stop stage 4 hashtag free flowing river were only raised as if to get more likes on instagram But will you forget our pleas and pleas our hunger strike still tubes had to be inserted into the body for survival but alas maybe you will forget it still because it's not you it's just the tista But I know you won't forget to lure us with your money but I tell you your money will finish one day But as long as my river flows it will take care of the needs of my 100th generation and hundreds more after that and then you will still come to us tell us its development but if this is what you call development then dam your dams because dams are not just lepcha's problem or zongu's problem this is my problem should be your problem national and a global problem because climate change is the problem natural disaster extinction and global warming is the problem the earth is in problem 
and I approach to you, all of you, because this is our one and only earth, and the earth is our only home, and our home is our responsibility. Everyone, it's been my absolute pleasure to be your host for this Rivers Unite Us 2021 Gala from International Rivers. Together, we are working for this critical mission to protect rivers and freshwater ecosystems around the world and to promote the rights of indigenous people from the global south, especially women, so that their voices can be heard. We've heard from the people we serve, staff, volunteers. I couldn't be prouder of this community for stepping up and partnering on all of this together. Thank you so much for your time and support. And please remember that this event is available on our campaign page and our Facebook event page. Please share it widely with your friends and networks. The text to donate feature and the donate now buttons on our campaign page and our website are available throughout the end of the year. Please do give generously. And if you want to know more about what we do, please visit internationalrivers.org sign up for our newsletter, and learn more about our events and webinars. It has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your generosity. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend and a great holiday season. Thank you, everybody. Somos Rios em Movimentos. A nossa sociedade tem muito o que aprender Amar os rios, as águas para o nosso bem viver A nossa sociedade tem muito o que aprender Amar os rios, as águas para o nosso bem viver Somos rios em movimento Somos rios em movimento Somos rios em movimento Somos rios em movimento Bolo e barrar os rios já mostrou que não é bom Altera o clima da terra e mata o que é som Pulo e barrar os rios já mostrou que não é bom Altera o clima da terra e mata o que é dom Somos rios em movimento Somos rios em movimento Somos rios em movimento Somos rios em movimento Sociedade consciente defendem os seus rios Deixar seu curso livre e vidas reproduzir Sociedade consciente defendem os seus rios Pra deixar seu curso livre e vidas reproduzir Somos rios em movimento Somos rios em movimento Somos rios em movimento Somos rios em movimento Aprendendo com a vida é dever de cada um E gritar pelos rios e a casa comum Aprendendo com a vida é dever de cada um E gritar pelos rios e a casa comum Somos rios em movimento Somos rios em movimento We're doing it at all the different levels Whether it's, you know, local, national, regional or international And I think that's very unique And for a, for a group that is our size For the people who are absolutely overworked and you know putting in these hours it's it's because of um you know international rivers passion and the people's passion for these things people who are dedicated to not just you know the work but they're dedicated to people